So one of my favorite life coach teachers of all time, Louise Hay, and I'm sure many of you know Louise Hay and have read her books and listened to her audio, has always said, and you know now she's passed away, but her spirit is still here. She always said that if we each have unconditional self-worth and self-love for ourselves, then we have probably solved at least 80% of the problems in our life. That is really, really profound. And that premise of having unconditional self-worth is so profound in how it affects our lives. Why? Why? Because if we do not have that self-worth, then we do not behave and make choices in our life that honor that self-worth, right? We always make choices that compromise the full potential of who we really are. And so I see this pattern in so many people's lives, including my life, including the people in my family. You know, I always say that my late sister's son died of years of stress and unhappiness and cancer was just her manifested symptom. I never say she died of cancer. Why? Why do I say this? Because growing up in a traumatic childhood where our father made us believe that we were not worthy, when we become adults, we start making decisions. My sister started making decisions that did not honor her, that compromised who she is. And so she kept on making decisions after decisions after decisions that do not honor her truth, that do not honor her soul's expansion and self-worth. And so every time you make a decision that does not honor you, it brings you more unhappiness. It brings you more stress. And so you keep repeating these patterns of making decisions that do not honor you. You keep repeating the pattern of stress and unhappiness. And then after some years, it manifests into disease in your body. That's what it is. Disease is really just a manifestation of our trauma emotions of how we feel about ourselves. I always say that. Disease is just a physical manifestation of where our consciousness is at. And so I see the same pattern in my own life. You know, I struggle with lots of uh, self-worthiness in my own life to this day. And I have to practice a lot of meditations, a lot of mantras, a lot of uh, inner self-talk. And so I see this everywhere, you know, I see it even in our Facebook community, you know, I do a lot of private one-on-one -on -one sessions and I've been so inspired by these sessions, but the underlying issue that I see in almost every member that I speak to is the issue of worthiness. It's this issue of worthiness. It is so big and profound. And so because this worthiness topic is so big and it affects so many of us. I'm doing a two part video. So next week's video is going to be practical tips I share with you on how to start feeling unconditionally worthy along with a meditation on worthiness. So look out for those videos. So I want to know from you on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, how Worthy do you feel right now and why? And so our deep feelings of unworthiness really started when we are a little child. And I see this in my own life, in my sister's life, in my siblings, in all of the private one-on-one -on -one sessions, I asked them about their childhood, what it was like. And there is this pattern of childhood abuse and trauma that makes us feel unworthy and carry this unworthiness as adults. And so I've shown you this chart before in my video about conditioned beliefs is that that unworthiness that we feel for ourselves is a conditioned belief that started when we are little babies. And it starts first from the people who are raising us, our parents, our grandparents. They are already conditioned in their own unworthiness because they've been conditioned by their own parents and society. So what did they do? What do they do? They're saying that 
In order for you to be worthy, in order for you to be lovable, there's a condition around that. So for example, your parents might say, well, if you stop crying, baby, then you're a good baby, right? There's a condition to being worthy or lovable. You're a good baby if you stop crying. Or our grandparents might say, well, if you finish that meal, then you're a good child, you're a good baby. Our grandparents are conditioning us. So they're already conditioning us and teaching us that worthiness has condition around it. And then we become an adolescent and teenager and there's more conditioning by society at large. Perhaps it's our teacher. Our teacher says, you are so smart because you get high grades. Now, worthiness and smart are kind of the same and equal, right? If we are smart, we feel that we are smart, then we feel that we are worthy, right? Well, the teacher is now saying that you are worthy because you get high grades. There's a condition behind that worthiness. Because you get the high grades, you are smart and therefore you are worthy. There's a condition there. And then we grow up as adults and there's more conditioning by society at large. Maybe it's our boss. Our boss says, you are valued as an employee in this company because you work hard. You are valued. Valued means you are worthy because you work hard. There's a condition behind that worthiness here again. Or your uncle might say, we are so proud of you because you have a good job, <laughs> right? Why can't you just be proud of me without the good job? Why do I need to have the good job to make you proud of me? Can I be proud of myself unconditionally? Again, there's a condition that we place around that worthiness. And so every step of the way as we grow up, there's a condition placed behind our worthiness. So by the age of even 10 years old, there are so many conditions placed around our worthiness. So imagine when you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, how much condition you've placed on your own worthiness. And so what happens is we assign a meaning to that worthiness. So let's say when we grew up, these are the things that happened to us. This is how we felt. We said, my parents never showed love to me. What does that mean? What meaning do you assign to that? I was not lovable. Or if you say, my parents were never proud of me. What meaning are you going to assign to that? I was not good enough for them and therefore not worthy. Or if you say, I never get my parents' approval. What does that mean? What meaning do you assign to that? I am not good enough and have to earn their approval. Or if you say, I always disappoint my parents, what meaning are you assigning to yourself? I am not good enough, so I can never do anything right. So the cause is being assigned a meaning. You're assigning a meaning to this cause right here. And this meaning is what gets us into trouble when we assign this meaning to ourselves. Because once we assign this meaning to ourselves, that we are not worthy, then what happens is every decision, every choice that we make do not honor us, right? So we always settle in our lives. So we say to ourselves, I don't deserve that job because I am not worthy. I don't deserve that relationship because I am not worthy. I do not deserve to make that kind of money because I am not worthy right? So you see how it affects every aspect of our lives, every aspect. I do not deserve that amazing health care or care from that person because I'm sick, because I do not feel worthy. So 
The worthiness has a direct correlation to every aspect of our lives. And that's why it's the foundation, as Louise Hay says, that if you feel worthy, you have probably solved at least 80% of the issues in your life. So the absolute false premise that we have about our worthiness is that we have to earn it in some way. We have to earn it in some way. And so we have to behave in a certain way to earn that worthiness, which is a false premise. So we might say to ourselves, I have to please others to be liked and we will behave in this way. So if we please others to be liked, then the result is, the feeling result is, I am liked, so I am worthy, right? But this is a false premise. You could feel unconditionally worthy without pleasing others. Or we might say to ourselves, caring about others of what they think, Caring about what others think is how we behave. We care about the way others think. And why do we believe that we have to care about the way others think? Because I have their approval, so now I am worthy. We're trying to get the worthy feeling by behaving this way. That we have to care about the way other th others think. So we get their approval and therefore we feel worthy. Or... We feel like we have to behave in this way, working hard to achieve material success. Because if we achieve material success, then I am successful materially, so I am worthy. Because if I do not have this material success, then I am not worthy. So there's a false premise that we have to earn our worthiness somehow. We have to earn it. We have to earn it. And we have to behave in this way in order to feel worthy here. But that is a false premise because the truth of who we really are is that we are already unconditionally worthy by the virtue of our being and existence. We are unconditionally worthy by the virtue of our being and existence. And what does that mean? And this is something that I had to go through with one of my viewers when I did a one-on-one -on -one private session. I asked her, what do you think is the definition of worthiness? Why are you worthy by the virtue of your being? Why is it? And she was thinking about it and she wasn't quite sure why she is worthy by the virtue of your being. And so I had to explain to her. I said to her, you are powerful because you are made up of the same source energy that created this entire universe. So there's this source energy or some people may call God, right? Right here. And this source energy or what you call God created the entire universe. Because without this source energy, nothing in this universe can manifest, including our bodies, who we are. We could not exist without the source energy. So we are an extension of the source energy. We are part and parcel of the source energy. So we are made up of the same energy that created this entire universe. Planet Earth is made up of the same energy that's created this entire universe. And we all are that same energy. So if we are that same energy that created this entire universe, think about how powerful we are. Think about the infinite potential that we really have in our lives, right? Because we are made up of the same source energy that created this entire universe. That is a powerful being. That is a powerful being. You are a powerful being and you don't even know how powerful you are. And by virtue of being this source energy, we are one with the source energy. We are this source energy. We are worthy. That is why we are worthy by the virtue of our being, by the virtue of being this source energy. We are worthy. And so when this source energy creates all of the manifestations in its form, whether it's planet Earth or whether it's each one of us, 
It doesn't say, well, I'm going to make this person better than this person or this person better than this person or this person better than this person. This source energy doesn't say that. We're equal. We might have different talents, skills, and things like that. Maybe this person's talented in engineering, this person's talented in teaching, this person is talented being a musician, but we all have the same level of talent. We just have to recognize it within ourselves that we are unconditionally worthy, that we are unconditionally smart, that we are unconditionally good enough because we are the same energy that created this entire universe. We are made up of that energy. So how can we not be unconditionally worthy? And so where we have to stop believing is that we have to earn our worthiness. That's a false premise. We have to earn our worthiness. That's a false premise. I want to stress that so much. You do not have to earn your worthiness. You are worthy by the virtue of your being. You are worthy by the virtue of your being. And so let's start deprogramming all of these conditioned beliefs that we have to earn our worthiness. We have to start deprogramming all of that. That's what it is. We have to start deprogramming that set of belief that we have to earn it somehow by pleasing others, by having material success, by having others approve of us and like us, then we are worthy. We have to stop that conditioned belief because we are worthy by the virtue of our being. So like I said before, in next week's video, I give you some practical ways to recondition your beliefs and reprogram yourself to start to feel that unconditional worthiness because that's really the foundation for any type of success in our lives, whether it's health, money, career, relationships, it's worthiness. That is really the foundation. So please, if you have any suggestions or tips about how you found your worthiness, share them below because your comments, feedback, and suggestions really help me and my community at large. And if you like this video, please make sure to share it and subscribe to my channel. And I also encourage you to join our Facebook community where I lead group healing live meditations, or we have live discussions and such topics as loneliness or grief or any kind of trauma. And I also provide private one-on-one -on -one sessions. If you want the deeper healing or if you have an issue that you do not want the public to know about because it's so private, that's where I do all those things in the private Facebook community. So ask to join, go to the link below. It's facebook.com slash groups slash yin and yang living, facebook.com slash groups slash yin and yang living. And if you want to visit all of my spiritual and holistic living tips, just go to my website at yin and yang living.com. Thank you. Namaste.